today's video we will be revisiting the Harris 20 MHz 286 PC. We review old technology from games to all PCs and don't forget the doll. We don't lose all get ancient electronics. We cover it all. So a few years ago I did my Anatomy of a 286 video and in that video uh, you know, I kind of looked at, in those anatomy of videos, I kind of take a look at like what makes the ultimate version of, of any sort of class of PC. And uh, I went with my 20 MHz 286, mainly because that was all I had at the time as far as 286s go. If I had to redo the anatomy of, I, I might go with something more mainstream like a 16 MHz. But I think the high-end 286 machines are, are pretty cool and you don't see a lot of the uh, 20 and the 25 MHz machines. So I thought that was a cool machine so I wanted to take another look at it and I think it really kind of deserved that. So. In this video, we're going to take another look at the machine. A uh, couple changes to it. You could probably tell, already tell if you remember watching that old video. And uh, we're going to do some gameplay to see how that uh, 20 MHz Harris 286 stacks up. So the first thing you might notice right off the bat, if you remember my old Anatomy of a 286 video, is um, the motherboard. This is the same motherboard, but it is in a different case. It used to be in a uh, tower, like a mini tower case. And unfortunately that case ha had a catastrophic failure. Don't, don't tell me how it happened, but I, I flicked it on one day and it, it used a kind of a rocker switch uh, for the power. It was a big old hawking gray power switch and it, it, I clicked it and it made a weird noise and the, the switch actually, like the plastic cracked on it and I tried taking it apart and putting it back together and it just never worked right again and I actually thought the motherboard was dead for the longest time. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I ended up testing out the motherboard not too long ago and to my surprise it, it started seemingly started working again. Um, so I don't know, it was just that case was, st I don't know what happened with that case, I don't know what the deal was. But it did give me an opportunity to kind of redo that build and uh, put it in a different case because I feel like for the like 8088, like the PC XT class machines and um, the, those 286s, I, I don't know, I feel like they're more at home in a desktop uh, form factor rather than a tower. Even if it's an old school, um, you know, mini tower, uh, I still feel like those machines, they're just more at home in a desktop case. So it did give me an opportunity to put it in another desktop. Uh, like this one right here, which I think looks is pretty perfect aesthetically for uh, 286. We've got the big old power button here, a key lock, reset turbo. Uh, we've got our little LED, which I do have set for the 20 megahertz. Um, if you'll notice here, this is a cool case badge. It says premium 286 processor. So if you like this badge, uh, which I think it's, it's really cool, it really gives this case a little bit of uh, personality, uh, go to... Uh, Geek Spiel, that's Spiel as in play in German, on eBay, and he has a ton of different case badges and stickers. Uh, ones that were never officially released. You'll be seeing a lot of those stickers in the future on my cases. So, it's just really cool. Check it out. You know, he's got like TNT2, you know, stickers you could put on, um, all the different OS's and things like this. Because I, I don't even think, I don't think they ever came out with like, oh, 286 inside sort of case badges. But if you want one, uh, you could get one. So check out Geek Spiel on eBay. Um, I know the guy actually, he lives in the same area as me. Really nice guy, uh, really quality case badges and case uh, stickers. So let's take a look at our drives really quickly. Uh, not too much has changed here from uh, the original setup when it was in the tower case. We've got the same uh, 1.2 megabyte uh, 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive. We have the 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. And then we have a CD drive, which in my original video um, on Anatomy of a 286 made a little bit of controversy. So whenever I have a 286 machine, uh, I always bring up CD drives and 286 machines. Now, uh, it doesn't appear there were any really machines at the time that were sold that were 286s that had a CD drive. Uh, if you're going strictly period correct, it's probably not something you want to put on there. Um, although, I, I would say I bet you in the early 90s there were still some 286 machines out there, and I'm sure people upgraded them. 
uh, I, I just find them a very convenient upgrade. Um, th there was a lot of games that may play fine on a 286 that, you know, was put in like a classics collection or some kind of collection uh, on CD drive. And I don't know, I just don't find it too big of a deal to put a uh, CD drive in a 286. But if you're going like purely 100% period correct, uh, you might want to leave out the CD-ROM drive. Now, I do try to go with some of the earliest, uh, kind of slowest CD drives I have to sort of match that early 90s period if you had a 286 and upgraded it. And this is actually a downgrade from the CD drive I was using prior in my 286. Prior, I was using a times 4 speed uh, CD-ROM drive, and this, I believe, is the slowest one I have in my collection. Slowest one running, uh, and that would be uh, 2 speed. Uh, CD-ROM drive, and uh, I was actually surprised that this thing worked. Uh, it's it's barely staying alive. So hopefully it will keep uh, soldiering on inside the Harris 20 megahertz 286. Okay, so I've taken the case lid off. We're going to take a quick look uh, inside this thing. Now, the motherboard, I don't recall the name of it off the top of my head. Um, we did talk about the motherboard in my uh, first video, um, but I'll put it on the uh, screen there and editing what model uh, motherboard that I'm using here. Um, it uses the 20 megahertz Harris, which you're not going to be able to see. I don't think so. It's right... Oh, there we go. It's right there. So, there's our 20 megahertz uh, Harris 286. Now, this is the second fastest 286 uh, they put out. There's a 25 megahertz, but I don't think this motherboard supports it. Um, I, I don't know if there should be like an, a clock oscillator somewhere on this board. Um, now, I, I might be able to swap it out and then put in a 25 megahertz Harris, but I actually don't know for sure if that would work. So if anyone knows, uh, let me know in the comments. It would be kind of cool to max this guy out to 25 megahertz, but I'm not sure this motherboard will uh, support or be able to handle uh, the 25 megahertz CPU. So. Um, quick look here also of note is this board actually has RAM on board um, so we don't need a RAM expansion it has four megabytes of RAM on board it looks like you have a choice you, you could either populate these sockets here I believe for RAM or you could use these little I believe like they're zip um, zip modules of RAM and they're each one megabyte each so four megabytes on board which is uh, pretty cool to have on board RAM for 286. Now also of note is the math coprocessor um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So right now I have the 287 uh, XL in there which is a cut down 387 processor um, but prior I had a 20 megahertz true uh, 287. So we'll look at some uh, some numbers later and we'll see which one of these is faster. Now this one should be the faster one because it is more advanced. Like I said, it, it it's just a, a 387 Math Co Pro cut down to work in a 286 motherboard. So if we look here we have the two uh, 287 FPUs, uh, the Co Math Co processors. Now the top one from IIT uh, is the one I originally had paired with the 20 megahertz Harris, and it is itself rated for 20 megahertz. Now these 20 megahertz uh, FPUs are, from my understanding, pretty uncommon. This one's from 1988. Um, as far as I can tell, I believe it's a true uh, 287 Math Co Pro, and I think, but I cannot confirm that these run at half the speed, so it'll be running at 10 megahertz, but I can't confirm that. I, I, I've also heard that it can run at the same speed. This particular one runs at the same speed, um, so I'm not 100% sure. Now, the one below it is the XL, the 287XL, and what that actually is is a 387 uh, FPU uh, math coprocessor, and it's just cut down to work in the uh, 286 board uh, along with a, a 286 and it, it should this one the XL should definitely run at the same speed so uh, I wanted to do just a couple really quick tests just to see if um, any of the benchmark programs I had on hand uh, could tell a difference between either of these FPUs. I believe this here is Norton System Works and on the left is the IIT uh, 287 and they come up at the same speed uh, 422.9 whetstone um, 
Although, interestingly, the one on the left, it does detect it as ITT. The, on the right, the XL just detects as a generic uh, 287. And lastly, we have Landmark here. And uh, on this one, it, it detects a speed difference. It detects the IIT 287 at uh, 12 MHz. And the XL, it actually detects at 15 MHz. And just keep in mind, I didn't do anything except swap the FPUs. I didn't change any other settings. Um, so right here I have a IDE card and it's also the floppy controller and I believe it's running the parallel and serial port um, on the back right here. And then it's running the two floppy drives and it's also running the CD drive. And then next to it we have a SCSI card and it's just right now it's just controlling the hard drive and we have this 50 pin a SCSI cable and it's going to the hard drive here. Now this hard drive actually came out of an Apple and it's a 1.2 gigabytes hard drive and it's sort of I kind of have it mounted as like a hard card. Uh, this definitely isn't period correct the bracket. This is just a, a Kingwin. I think this was meant to hold an SSD uh, but you're supposed to on this machine I believe you're supposed to mount the hard drive here um, but I was using the three uh, five and a quarter inch slots and I there's when I got this machine, I, I think there's supposed to be like a metal mounting bracket here, which I don't have. So I couldn't mount anything there. So I mounted it right here. It seems to work just fine. And then real quick, let's talk about video and sound. I have not changed up the video card, although I did do some testing with some other cards. Um, but the faster cards I was looking at, I just felt they were better at home in a 386. So I stuck with this guy here. This is about from ATI. This is a VGA Wonder XL24, and it does a pretty good job. I believe that's one megabyte of video RAM. It might be 512 uh, KB, but I think it's a, a whole megabyte of video RAM. This card is overkill for anything this machine is going to be playing. It also gives me a lot of options, though, because it has a connector both for, like, a standard VGA monitor and also the 15-pin if I want to use, like, a CGA uh, or an EGA monitor. And there's a, I believe that's for a bus mouse. Uh, connector right there, but I like how it gives me the versatility of using either monitor. And I think this card has really good uh, CGA compatibility. It's the same video card I was using before in this uh, 286. Uh, I'm just going to continue using it. Um, this is already probably overkill, and the other cards I was looking at uh, were more overkill. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I like how it has the two uh, different ports, and I believe it auto switches. So you don't have to set any, uh, there's no dip switch on here. It just knows what kind of monitor you have hooked up. And then for sound, I'm going with the Sound Blaster. Uh, I believe this is a, either a 1.0 or a 1.5. It is, I think it's a 1.0 because all of these are socketed, I think. Um, it's a CT1320C from 1990. Again, I think this fits uh, really good with like a high-end 286. Uh, maybe some something someone got on a budget in the early 90s or had uh, that purchased in the late 80s and still hadn't upgraded it. Uh, I think this card works really well with that kind of theme uh, for a setup. And it has has your nice volume uh, control there on the card. I always like that. And uh, yeah, this should work really well. Ad lib support and um, Sound Blaster support too, so pretty cool. And I believe, yeah, because it has the chips, it should also have the CMS uh, Creative Music support too, which uh, some earlier games used or had as an option. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to go with for sound. All right, so we're all set up here. I've got the uh, LCD hooked up, so let's uh, see how some programs and games run on this machine. Oh, and it's not plugged in. Okay, let's try this again. And it should, here we go. Green light. There's the VGA Wonder X24. Screen looks looking a little dim though. Uh, we're counting up the memory. Four megabytes. And it should log, yep, there it's going into the, uh, there's the app. Adapt now, not period correct, 1997 uh, for this Adapt Tech controller, but uh, whatever. Quantum Fireball, and there we go. 
And there's our CD-ROM drive. Uh, we've got our blaster set. Uh, 64K high memory area is available. Uh, cute mouse go in there. And I believe we also are going to see the whole uh, 1.2 gigabytes on the... Yeah, there we go. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, that screen's looking a little dim. Hold on, I'm going to see if uh, I can adjust it, the brightness. Alright, so here's top bench running. So let's run the benchmark real time. And it looks like we're getting a score of 40-41. So it looks like it's putting this machine in the area of a 386SX uh, at 20 megahertz. it looks like. Here's some side-by-side -side screenshots of uh, my 286 and my I have a BSR uh, 386 machine. Its CPU is a 16 megahertz 386SX. And as you can see the comparison here, it looks like the 286 at 20 megahertz is beating that 16 megahertz 386 by a little over 300 dry stones. Don't know how they calculate dry stones, who knows. Uh, but interesting, if you look at the the math FPU, the coprocessor, the uh, 387 in that BSR 386 uh, motherboard is is crushing the 287 XL, which is like a cut down 387. All right, and let's try some Planet X3, um, and let's check the ad lib. All right, looks good. Sounds, well, sounds bad through the speakers on that monitor, but it's, it's obviously working. Start game. Well, if you'll notice, the um, sound effects for this game, let me turn the music off for a minute. So sound effects for this game should come through the PC speaker. Now, I had tested this not long ago, and the PC speaker on this machine does work, but the wire is uh, kind of loose. Um, I put some electrical tape on it, and uh, it, it was working, but I'm guessing uh, when I put the lid on this thing, uh, maybe something got jostled. Uh, on that wire and it's not making a great connection now but the PC speaker on this does work it's a little muted it's not very strong um, it does use an actual cone speaker but yeah I think it's just it's just that wire probably got jostled a bit when I put the top of the the lid back on so uh, after this video I'm probably gonna open it up and I'm just clean those connections um, the connector for the speaker and uh, just get it a little bit of a good connection. It's just, it's the speaker works, it's just a little finicky with that wire. Alright, next up for testing is Major Striker. So now the question is going to be, is that uh, double speed CD-ROM drive uh, still going to work for me? So, uh, let's see here. Yeah, okay, perfect. <laughs> now, will it install? That's another matter. Um, but it looks like there's not enough room. <laughs> uh, that's right, this game. Um, I guess the hard drive's just too big for Major Striker. Not enough room on the drive to install the game. Space required, and then I have like negative. It, it's I, I always forgot to forget about that. Um, with this game, it just it's one of those games that it seems to be pretty picky if you have a uh, much larger hard drive. Um, there's probably a way around it, but nah, next. Alright, so as you can see in here, I did get Wolf 3D installed. Um, now, in, different from last time, last time I installed uh, with the CD version I have, but this time I installed it from floppy drive. So, uh, let's run it and see if we still have that weird corrupt graphics I uh, originally had. Uh, with this setup. Okay. Let's see how it looks. So far, so good, but it was really those walls that were messed up uh, originally. 
and looks looks fine now. So I'm just just for the heck of it, I'm gonna expand it to the uh, the largest view here, uh, the largest view window. Did it take it? No. Enter to accept. Computing. How it plays. Not. I mean, the sounds muffled because of these speakers, but. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. I mean, not the smoothest I've ever seen this game, but it's certainly completely playable. I'd want to get normal speakers, but... Ah! <laughs> that was terrible. Okay, yeah, it looks just fine. I, I don't know what was, was with when I did this, uh, when I did the initial video. Um, with this machine, and I played Wolf, uh, these, like, walls, the textures here had, like, lines through them. Uh, maybe that was just, like, this, this version was different from the CD. Um, and it was, it was messing with an older system. Is there something? Yeah. It was, maybe it was, like, messing with, um, it was just the newer version wasn't as compatible, maybe, with this ATA card, but... Yeah, I just installed it from the uh, floppy ver I have, and uh, it's working. Looks just fine. So, cool. Yeah, plays really well on this machine. Oh, okay. So, big bummer. Um, I was just trying to test uh, VET or VETE <laughs> on this uh, machine, and uh, apparently the, the floppy disk is bad, corrupt. When I try to run um, the VET, it just says data error reading B drive. Um, although I do have the other one, the other disc here, which is CGA, but it looks like the the EGA one, IBM EGA, uh, appears to be corrupted. Um, yeah, so that's a bummer. I'll have to look for another copy, or uh, usually I might go online and you know procure a copy um, since I do legally own the game, um, but I don't really have time for that right now. So. Um, maybe at least we can see if the CGA version works. See if it actually, yeah. Look at that. Wait. <laughs> I've never played this, I've never played this game before, but at least it looks like it's running, so I don't hear any sound. That seems like maybe it's running a little too fast. I, I'm suspecting that the CGA version is expecting something a little slower, um, like an older Tandy 1000, or perhaps like an 8088 or 8086, um, or maybe even a slow 286. And I'm guessing like the EGA version um, might be expecting a little bit faster of a machine. So I don't know. I've never played this before, but it, it just feels like it's running a little bit fast. So my guess is the CGA version expects a slower machine, but. Um, I mean, it looks, it looks good. Um, just might be running a little fast. No, well, the speaker correct or the speaker wire must have corrected itself because if you listen, you can hear the engine now uh, coming through the PC speaker. But I don't like. I I mean, obviously accelerating, um, but the car is not moving. No, the car isn't moving. <laughs> what what is going on here? Why won't it move? I, I mean the cars going by and stuff all looks like uh, normal speed, but what am I missing? Why am I up? Oh, oh, it's it's a manual. I see. Woo. Uh, maybe a no. Uh, maybe a pinch fast. I don't know. It seems okay. What happened? I just wreck. Yep. Yeah. Huh. So, um, yeah, there's a little bit of that. Alright, here's Stunt Driver. Um, obviously this is not the CGA version. I got this one to install and it's running just fine and no problems, this seems to be running pretty good on this machine. 
not much else to uh, comment on it. This is another driving game that I'm obviously not very good at and never have played before this moment. Alright, and then here we have the original Wing Commander, and this is an interesting one because I believe this is a very speed sensitive game, and I believe the recommended CPU for this game is a 20 MHz 386. Uh, but this 20 MHz 286 is about equivalent to that, should be, so this game should run at the correct speed on this machine. And um, as I'm playing it here, it does appear to run very well. Or maybe it might have been a 25 megahertz 386 that was the rec recommended CPU, but this this 20 megahertz 286 should still be in the ballpark there, so it, it should run more or less correct. Now, I'll admit I don't have very much experience at all playing this game. Uh, it seems to run fine on this system, but if you guys think it's running a little too fast or a little too slow, let us know in the comments, because I am curious. So here's to illustrate my point about, um, you know, possibly putting a CD-ROM drive in a 286 or something along those lines, uh, unless you're going strictly period correct, and uh, that's because one of the games I want to try was A10, A10 Tank Killer. Now, I have the box copy of this game uh, with the discs, and disc didn't work. I tried to install it, and uh, one of my discs is corrupt, so I couldn't install it, but hey, what do you know? There is a version on uh, CD-ROM, as well as uh, Red Baron. So, uh, like I said, I, I think the utility of a CD-ROM drive and something like a 286 is, is good because, uh, you know, floppy disks fail. Maybe you didn't have it backed up or whatever, uh, but they did release it a lot of times on uh, CD-ROM. So, and this is, these should be perfectly playable games on a 286, uh, at least a faster one. So, that being said, the CD-ROM in this machine refused to read this disc. I just kept getting an error, and it just would not read it at all. It was not having it. Um, don't know what the issue is. It is a really old uh, CD drive. It's, it's kind of on the fritz. Um, smart thing to do, like I said, would just be to replace it with anything. You could replace it with a newer drive. I have plenty of those. I even have ones that are even just a little bit newer. That, that wouldn't look quite as good because they're like a bit newer, uh, but they should work much better. Uh, but I'm going to stick with that drive because I'm just curious how long it will, uh, it's going to survive in there. I, I just, <laughs> I'm probably not going to use it too much in this machine, but I just want to see how long it uh, chugs long. Now, interestingly enough, it did read a... Uh, CDR just fine. I installed I the Beholder uh, from this CDR, and um, and by the way, I do have the actual box copy of this game, but it was just more convenient to install from the CD here. But yeah, it read this CD and it installed the game. Now I did get a couple errors when installing from the CD, but I just hit R for retry a few times, and it would eventually 
you know, read the file and uh, download it and to the hard drive and installed it just fine. Um, so, yeah. can I say about this machine other than I do like it uh, I like how it has this turbo button here that I can down clock the 20 megahertz to uh, 10 megahertz that really helps with the versatility uh, for playing a little bit of those later games um, now this is not uh, what I would consider like a quintessential 286 machine um, if you want something to really represent kind of like the 286 better I'd go with a 12 or even 16 megahertz 286 20 and 25 megahertz is up there in that category where it's like, yeah, you may as well get a 386. Now this 20 megahertz 286 supposedly is faster in some applications than a, an equivalent uh, 386. But then it does have that drawback of, you know, certain games require a 386. Um, there's just no really getting around that. So uh, should you hunt something like this down? No. Uh, if you really want to fill that niche, that era, I would say just definitely go with a 386. There's nothing that this machine can do that a 386 could not do. Um, I think you can cover this era just fine by, you know, like an 8088 machine, something that maybe, you know, that 4.77 megahertz, uh, maybe even better if you have a turbo on that to go to 7 or 10 megahertz, you, something like a Tandy 1000 or even an IBM XT or something like that, and then pair it with a 386, uh, you know, even like a, a slower uh, 16 megahertz 386. I, I think you're gonna have better results than going with a 286. They weren't, you know, super common. They weren't around long. They're harder to come by, and it's just, I, like I said, the biggest thing is uh, there's nothing that this will do that a 386 won't do. That said, it's still really cool. But me being a, a hardware collector that's, you know, really into the hobby, I'm, I'm going to keep this guy. Uh, I am going to use it for, you know, a really certain specific era of games. And uh, I think it will fill that niche quite nicely. Again, I'm really digging the uh, Premium 286 badge right there. Yeah, as for the components, I really like the Sound Blaster. I think it does a good job. 
uh, that early sound blaster. I like having the creative music system compatibility. I don't believe it's it's a hundred percent on that card, but it's it's pretty close. ATI card. It's a nice VGA card. Probably overkill for this machine. Um, but I, I will say with that card, I have had some issues with it in faster 486s, uh, but it might just be the machines I've tried in. But it's a really good VGA card for like a 286 or a 386. A lot of versatility with that VGA card, and it has pretty good CGA compatibility, so I'm really happy with that. Um, this is probably going to be my main 286, so uh, I'll probably be using it uh, quite a bit. Uh, although, I, I am curious to see how long this uh, double speed drive uh, holds out. So, but well, I'm going to keep it chugging along as long as I can, just, just for kicks. So, again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. Please comment if you have any questions or just comments or memories you want to share. Um, and thanks for taking another look at this 286 machine with me. And I'll see you in the next video.